The spirit of this story is a spirit of celebration. It is a pulling together of the hopes that have been generated throughout the gospel story. And it focuses the desire, the hope of the listeners for one who will literally redeem the world and who will change things. The spirit of the story is implicit in the celebration of the confirmation of Jesus' status as a prophet, with which the story begins. So the first part of the story, then, is Jesus sending the disciples into the village and telling them what they're going to find. Now, there is a question about whether these have been prearrangements or whether this is prophecy. This is clearly prophecy. This is like Samuel telling Saul what he will find after he has anointed him. There are several stories like this in the Old Testament. It's a sign of Jesus' ability to foresee what is ahead. So when they go and untie the colt, there is, a first of all, a sense of amazement that what Jesus had foreseen was indeed the case. And then when, of course, those who are there in the village see them taking this colt, they ask him, well, what are you doing taking the colt? Obviously, they think they're, and appropriately, that they're trying to steal it. And when they say that the Lord has need of it, immediately they let them take it. Uh, So it is a confirmation of Jesus' sense of both what the situation is, but also, also his prophetic insight into what will happen in the future. The colt uh, is also a donkey. It's a translation decision to call it a colt. It is then the antithesis of the usual animal that a king will ride into the city. Usually, kings will ride on horses, you know, a white stallion or something. So the kings of the world have always ridden horses. Jesus rides a colt. A donkey. On the one hand, this can be seen as a kind of joke, the kind of anti authority sign in what Jesus does. It's obviously a sign of his humility and his willingness to accept a degree of humility that most candidates for major political office would find absolutely unacceptable. The expectation that is clearly raised by Jesus riding into the city in this way is the expectation of the restoration of David's kingdom. That's the climax of this whole story. The change of expectations that is implicit in this perception of who Jesus is and what he's going to do, in contrast to what Jesus has said to the disciples earlier in the three forecasts, uh, three prophecies of his passion, death, and resurrection, is that this is a major change of expectations is a major change of expectations in relation to a messianic figure. The messiahs were the anointed ones of Israel. They were the ones who were going to establish a new monarchy, who were going to lead the armies of Israel into victory against the Gentiles. What is poignant about this story is that Jesus in Mark clearly knows what it is that is coming. He knows that he will be handed over that he will be rejected because of his understanding of what it is to be the Messiah. When he then accepts the accolades of the crowd calling for the restoration of the kingdom of David, he knows that he is not going to do that. And so there is something really poignant about this story in terms of the realities of politics in the first century. And his, on the one hand, raising those expectations, and on the other hand, knowing that he will not fulfill them. This is then a sign of both what Jesus knew was coming and also his willingness to participate in raising these expectations and then changing them. The liturgical tradition of reading then the Passion narrative on Palm Sunday follows on this realization the story ends with a kind of sober note 
about Jesus entering into the city and looking around and then going back out. It, too, establishes the somber note of what is ahead. 